for uh, the NHS as a data coordinator and I worked on the administration in CAMS. So I've, um, from an administrative data perspective, I've seen a lot of information um, about young people and therapeutic interventions and early intervention, and it is absolutely not lost on me that every single piece of data is actually part of a real person's journey. Um, and as we go through this slide presentation, you will see some case studies that touch upon individual journeys, which understandably have been suitably anonymized. And if I talk too fast or anyone wants me to uh, clarify a point, uh, that doesn't count as a question, so do shout out. So what is Bloom? The, the, the blurb there, Bloom is a professional consultation model offering an holistic approach across services to support children's emotional, social and mental well-being. That tells you um, what the mission statement is. The bullets below give you an idea of uh, the key points of the model and we were looking at it in more detail, but essentially Bloom is a way for a young person to get help with their emotional, social and mental well-being, where because of of the presentation or behaviours, given uh, that Bloom is needs based, it's determined from the referral that their needs uh, are not best met by CAMS or um, what I'll call a high level intervention. You can see uh, from the bullets that uh, Bloom is suitable for young people up to the age of 18, and as you can appreciate, Across that age range, there will be a, a marked shift as the young people get older in terms of presentation and uh, need. Bloom is supported by a whole range of statutory, non-statutory and voluntary sector organisations. And indeed, Bloom could not function without this wide ecology. Bloom is needs based and early intervention, although we will discover as we go along that um, it's not as early intervention as it used to be in that we are increasingly even pre-COVID um, experiencing more and more complex cases, some of which involve uh, existing family dynamics such as um, uh, young people or the parents with a learning need or a disability. Bloom is interprofessional um, and although it is led by the senior partner organisations who are CAMS on the NHS side and Head Start Kerno, which is an organisation that's funded by the National Lottery Community Fund and sits within Cornwall Council. Uh, the other organisations all have a part to play, particularly when they have a specific area of expertise, for example, in Cornwall, we have Penhagen's Friends, which is an organisation specifically dedicated towards uh, grief and bereavement support. Bloom is also a shared learning space. And uh, what I mean by that is it is an informal space where professionals get together to discuss referrals, but it's also an opportunity for professionals to get peer support and sometimes just to get an understanding of what they're doing right. We've heard anecdotally that school staff do not get this kind of support. And as it's often school staff who are present in the room, as it is now a virtual meeting, the feedback that we've had uh, via Saskia and her colleagues who did the interviews and focus groups is that that kind of um, peer support has been invaluable for them in terms of uh, their resilience and also upskilling them to understand a lot of the terminology and approaches that are used in emotional and mental well-being. Bloom is informed and underpinned by the Thrive Network. Sorry, Thrive Framework even. Thrive uh, was developed uh, largely by the Tavistock and the Anna Freud Centre. The Thrive model essentially is needs-led and identifies uh, what kind of support young people need based on 
how they are thriving. You can see from uh, the, the two diagrams there, obviously the one on the left looks at the response to the young person's needs, whereas the model on the right or the diagram on the right looks at the quadrant they fall within. If you turn your attention to the um, diagram on the right and the top left quadrant, which here is labelled uh, coping, but is also sometimes referred to as getting advice, that would be the lowest level of input that is required, which as you'll see is signposting self-management. That could be something as simple as uh, access to online resources. And indeed during COVID we have relied at various times because of lockdown and access to uh, even low level therapeutic inter interventions, we've relied on online support. As you go around the diagram from the clockwise uh, direction, you'll see that the level of need increases to getting help, which is some focused intervention, to getting more help, which is extensive uh, treatment that could include organisations like CAMS. And at the extreme, if you will, the bottom left of getting risk support, which may involve situations such as um, risk of suicide, uh, the need for inpatient treatment, um, severe self-harm, and also risky behaviours in terms of substance abuse or at risk of um, sexual exploitation. The link below, uh, when you get these slides, if you're not familiar with iThrive, the link uh, that's at the bottom of the slide will take you to uh, the iThrive website, which will tell you basically everything you need to know and more. Um, I would point out that in our data analysis of a sample of cases, and we will touch upon this a bit later, we discovered somewhat to our surprise that some young people's presentations actually fit more than one quadrant. So someone could be in need of, should we say, some general help in getting help, but because of the circumstances at risk of exploitation, there also needs to be focus on risk support. This is some background to Bloom, where it came from and uh, how it functions. It was piloted in Penwith, which is in the far west of Cornwall, where I am. And there were two pilots the original objective was to reduce referrals into CAMS, into Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, and also to prevent young people uh, being on waiting lists. The two pilots were completed and gradually across the six localities, the roll-up um, was affected and is now across Cornwall, all six localities functioning in the same way since 2019. The very nature of Cornwall, like any uh, geographically wide area, is such that access to resources locally uh, varies according to locality. So although the framework is the same and is underpinned by steering groups, the resources that are available uh, can be markedly different. Um, I don't know how familiar you all are with Cornwall, but the shape of Cornwall is such that it's almost like a wedge. And in the northeast and southeast of Cornwall, geographically, it's more um, spread out. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello. <clears throat> Okay, I'll continue. Not quite sure what happened there. Um, so although Bloom functions in the same way, the resources that are available depend very much on geography and Bloom's remit because there currently there is no funding behind Bloom in terms of um, a budget to pay for uh, interventions for a young person. Bloom is very much uh, reliant on the organisations available. And indeed, some cases come into Bloom because they're screened and the information provided is, should we say, sufficiently low level that Bloom is the um, 
appropriate response. But in the professional consultation meeting, it's determined from the presence of other professionals that actually there are other factors that were not mentioned on the referral that were known to social care or this young person may previously have been under camps care. And one of the outcomes from Bloom can be that the person's case is transferred into CAMS or the primary mental health team that sit within CAMS. So Bloom is also an opportunity uh, to really get an holistic view of a young person's life, the family dynamics, um, the home life and also the school life. And as professionals, I'm sure you, you come across young people where everything seems to be OK at school, but not so at home and vice versa. The governance that was put in place by Head Start, uh, once Head Start Kerno joined uh, the sort of Bloom family of organisations as such that there is a locality steering group which I would liken to a works committee in that um, professionals get together usually quarterly to discuss how effective Bloom has been, usually using data that Head Start Kerno provide. They decide on the frequency, timing and location of the meetings which are often at family hubs and sometimes at large schools to enable teaching staff to attend. Each young person uh, previously was discussed for about half an hour to 45 minutes of the face to face meeting. In response to COVID-19, we've now moved to an online model using Teams and we allow an hour for young people. And in many cases, because of the complexity of the case, that discussion will extend to an hour and a half. This is a pen picture of the process for Bloom and how it works in practice. All referrals for, uh, or as we call it, requests for help, go through the early help hub, which by its name is a, a central uh, single point of access. Referrals can be made by any professional. Uh, previously, GPs were very high in the uh, recorded professionals of late, perhaps unsurprisingly. Uh, it's been more schools and colleges and also parents themselves. The young people, if they are of a, a suitable age, can make a referral themselves as well. And we have had instances where a young person has made a referral but asked for their parents or carers not to be informed. The CAMS access team are co-located with the Early Help Hub and they are the uh, they are the oracle in terms of deciding based on the referrals, the referral information which referrals are appropriate for Bloom. A welcome letter is then sent out with FAQs to manage expectations sent to the parent or carer as well as the GP requesting a nominated professional. The key, one of the key points about the Bloom model is because it is a professional consultation model, young people and their families are not present in the meeting. Previously, this was partly because um, with face-to-face -face meetings, which would be a two to three hour session and various young people would be discussed, understandably families would be privy to information about other young people. But in addition, the family dynamic is also discussed in the room. And there have been several cases where information has come to light from social care that was not available on a referral, say that had been made by parents or carers requesting help for the young person. And that social care information was key in understanding more completely what's going on for the young person and in terms of addressing what needs to happen to be able to support them. So the parent or carer is asked to nominate uh, a nominated professional who will attend on their behalf. Mostly this has been a member of school staff because they see the child most of the time, but there have been occasions where parents have issues with the school, even if they've allowed the school to make the referral and another professional needs to be found. Where that isn't the case, then the meeting can go ahead with just the referral information. But obviously it's a much richer discussion if you have somebody in the room who can advocate for the family 
and also answer questions based on their interactions with them, which is why um, we asked the nominated professional to liaise with the family beforehand to really bring the child's voice into the centre of the discussion. Within the meeting, there is always a CAMS clinical psychologist and a primary mental health worker and a chair from Head Start Kernel. Uh, you'll see in the next slide that there will be other uh, professionals who routinely attend. But what this enables us to do as part of the discussion of the young person's presentation and needs is to put together a psychological formulation and address any help suggestions uh, to that psychological formulation. Another key facet of Bloom is that it is not a service. It's more of a holistic wraparound to bring other services together for interprofessional collaboration and makes suggestions. And those suggestions are detailed in a consultation plan, which is returned to the family and the GP. But also within the meeting, there is a point of contact who is agreed and that point of contact will go back to the family and liaise with them and go through the list of suggestions. They can be, generally there are two or three, I have seen as many as six, depending on the complexity of the young person's environment and their needs. The family may decide not to pursue some or all of those suggestions. And one of the discussions that's currently taking place with Bloom is how we can actually do uh, follow-up evaluations with the families to understand what choices they made and what informed those choices. At the end of the meeting, the case is closed to Bloom, the consultation plan is set out, and the family are told, um, in fact, I think, believe they're told in the welcome letter as well, that they can re-refer at any time. It's not a, a it's not a, a single opportunity. We do find that young people are given support through the suggestions and subsequently perhaps a, a series of counselling suggestions, for example, uh, has been followed up. But subsequently at the end of those, the young person still needs help or needs additional help, in which case they are uh, welcome to re-refer and that does happen. I would say that happens in a very really small number of cases. Uh, I would say less than 5% currently. Within the meeting, alongside the core team, as uh, defined in those three bullets, there are a variety of attendees. This, as you can appreciate, was much, much easier when we met face to face, because it also meant that people could drop in if they happened to be in, in the vicinity or in the building when the meeting was taking place. COVID has complicated things significantly in all kinds of healthcare, but also in these meetings in that, um, you know, the technology has to be available, the space has to be available for these professionals to attend by teams. Early help locality managers usually attend, and uh, one of the benefits of having an early help locality manager is that they have access to social care records while the CAM staff have access to some health records. And that is where we get a more complete overview of the young person and includes information that may not have been available in a referral for a variety of reasons. Should also be said that the consultation plan is done sensitively and mindfully. And if, for example, uh, there were a parent who is known to have substance abuse problems, then the language that will be used in writing back to the parent will be mindful of that. Uh, in all cases, we want to work with the young people and their families and professionals and not against them. The next two slides may be particularly um, pertinent to your professions. I would uh, draw your attention um, actually to any of these but if you look for example let's let's take the third one down which is the male age nine asd and learning disabilities 
query for ADHD due to behavioural difficulties. So this might be a case where there has been a query based on presentation or based on understanding, but it hasn't been followed up. There could be a variety of reasons for that. It could be that the young person is already has completed the ASD pathway and uh, some professionals feel they're being adequately supported through that. In this case, an attuned parent has attended parenting classes and the young person, it says, although continues to struggle, I mean, obviously these notes aren't that specific, so you don't know whether it's the parent, uh, but obviously the young person is still struggling. You see from the outcome that one of the outcomes is the ADHD workup, which is actually a function performed by the primary mental health team. So by going into Bloom and having that wider discussion through our links with the primary mental health team and the CAMS clinical psychologists, we're able to directly transfer a referral without the need to re-refer, go back into the loop. And understandably, this is one of the things that's really important for parents. If you look at the last of the four uh, re referral overviews, you can see that this one is particularly complex with a congenital neurological condition, physical health difficulties, including epilepsy. You can also see from there that there's past involvement from the SKIP team who in Cornwall support disabled children and young people from 0 to 18 and their families. So from that case, you can see that there's been significant involvement from other professionals. Where possible, being aware of that information in advance, we would look to get one of the SKIP team in addition to any nominated professional, if the parents hadn't nominated them, to be in the room to enrich the discussion. The outcome for that particular one, as you can see, was a CAMS assessment, and that would have been um, transferred directly to CAMS, and the admin team would have been in touch from CAMS with the family to make the assessment at the earliest available date. Bloom is not a backdoor into uh, CAMS, PMH or any other service, <coughs> excuse me, but it is a way of ensuring uh, that there's a clear handover and that that activity takes place. You'd also see for that male aged eight, there's the TIS approach, which is the trauma-informed schools approach, uh, which is rolled out across Cornwall and our partnership with other colleagues in Head Start Kerno who are TIS trained and with the schools has been key to the success of Bloom. And you'd also see that there's liaison with other um, health professionals. We do routinely liaise with, uh, for example, paediatrics. Uh, we sometimes get referrals from the paediatrics team and some of the help suggestions may involve additional um, activity from paediatrics. These um, case studies were put together for us by uh, a GP. Um, Bloom was actually set up initially by uh, one of the uh, prominent founders was a GP, uh, Dr. Laura Ashton, who is a GP in Cornwall and has been very much a, a champion for Bloom and GPs remain at the heart of uh, the Bloom model. You see in each of these cases, and obviously the photographs are generic photographs, these aren't young people, but it helps to fix in mind, as we've said before, and I'm sure all of you know from your daily work that these are real people, uh, and that no page, no report, no overview can ever adequately uh, describe, define the complexity of a young person's life and their inner life. If you can uh, take your attention particularly to uh, Rosie, middle age seven, special guardianship order, struggles managing emotional distress, sleeping and engaging with schoolwork. So you can already see that the uh, presentation covers home and school. In this case, there were two Bloom meetings, probably in order to get the right professionals together. Typically, there is one meeting 
but Bloom is adaptable uh, to the needs of the young person and to, uh, well, literally helping them to thrive. So in this case, you can see that CAMS and the GP is very rare. Uh, I can count on one hand the number of times that the GP has been available for the professional consultation model. It's just not been possible because of the way that they work, although ironically, um, the response to COVID-19 and the virtual model has made that uh, more likely. One of the things that we are doing in Bloom is engaging with uh, GPs more widely across Cornwall as part of our comms strategy and plan, and we want to get them more actively involved. The third paragraph for Rosie, helpful input by a clinical psychologist supporting school and mental health support team education worker with understanding of difficulties. The MHST is another level of support for uh, young people that is um, clinician led but embedded within schools across Cornwall and it's another, another layer of support and we work in tandem um, with them. In some cases they will make the referrals, in other cases they will be one of the suggestions for follow-up work. In this case you can also see that the mental health support team uh, support was included and a referral to the Family Plus service for life story work. And again, this is very specific to this young person and to their circumstances. We don't, um, we're not naive enough to think that Bloom will fix everything. But what it does do is shines a light on the complexity of uh, young people's presentations and needs and gets the right professionals in a room so that decisions uh, can be made not only in the short term but sometimes in the medium to long term. Typically, um, drawing on the data that I've been analysing for um, at least the last year, year and a half, typically there may be a, a, a series of sessions, say half a dozen, so in, in the short to medium term, for a young person for certain kinds of support, or possibly low level uh, cognitive behavioural therapy. But there are occasions where two types of support may be suggested, one in the short term and one in the long term, once the young person is in a position to receive that help. For example, if a child is in trauma, clearly that would need to be addressed before any further support would take place. I mentioned I thrive before and the quadrants. Uh, this is just to give you an overview based on the 79 uh, cases that we sampled. Um, I won't labour the point except to say that if you look at the three bullets, you see that 65% of referrals were wholly or partly beyond getting advice, which was the first of those quadrants. And 14% were in more than one quadrant and 13% were wholly or partially within getting risk support, which uh, is key information when we look to the further commissioning of Bloom to get an understanding of the uh, landscape for young people and the kind of young people uh, that Bloom is aiming to and does indeed help. These are the closed cases. Uh, in the year 2019 to 20. Uh, of particular interest is the orange box on the right, which shows you of the 257 that were closed, bearing in mind that the 257 cases that were initially allocated to Bloom were deemed to be low level support, 50% reference anxiety, 27% self-harm, 26% families affected by domestic violence and abuse, 23% depression, low mood, 22% children who had not been attending schools regularly. When we delved into the data, it was an eye opener. And in fact, it chimed with some of the feedback we'd had from some professionals in the room that they felt that the young people that they were discussing were ever more complex. And there have been discussions about how we support those professionals uh, there have been issues raised, and I believe uh, in some of the feedback to the NCB 
at least one reference to the need to be aware of vicarious trauma in the professionals. This um, this particular slide, this is, I'll just, just read a couple of these. Essentially, this was some feedback from GPs about what would be lost if Bloom did not exist. Uh, and the relevance of that is at the moment, uh, there are discussions about the future of Bloom and how it will be funded. Uh, the two points I draw your attention to are the penultimate one, the cost savings across the system, in that uh, it avoids duplication. And it is an affordable model to discuss young people and arrive at help suggestions, which then need to be um, owned by other organisations and individuals. Currently, the cost model to take a young person's referral through Bloom, get the professionals together and to come up with a range of help health suggestions and help suggestions in the consultation plan is about £400 per young person. And the other is swifter help and better outcomes for the child or young person. There are no waiting lists in Bloom, but the, the role in programme of discussions is such that we would expect all young people's uh, needs to have been discussed with help suggestions arrived at within approximately 56 calendar days of the referral being received into Bloom and typically much quicker than that. This is, the, this is an overview of the shared commitment, which just shows you um, what each of the, the main partners do within Bloom, uh, what their contribution is, health, education, social care, the voluntary sector, and Head Start Kerner, which I'm a part, which essentially are the, the machinery that keeps Bloom going. Conscious of time, um, this was a, a I'll pass on that. That's just some senior stakeholder feedback. I just want to say uh, one other thing, and this is just really for uh, additional information. Uh, Bloom currently discusses and closes on average 260 referrals per year. Understandably, we don't yet have the data for 2021, but we are looking to evaluate that in 2022. And we've already produced a comparison report between 2019 and 2020 to get some understanding of trends, to get some understanding of main referrers, and also to produce a kind of scorecard to give us an indication for young people of each age between 0 and 18 uh, that have been seen through Bloom, which is 4 to 18 currently, um, what the presentation rate is for each of those um, major referral factors. Conscious of time, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have them. But you're not obliged. Well, that's a success. Looks like we've done early. Everybody gets a coffee. I can um, I can see some typing in the chat there, so I don't know if that's just a thank you or if it's a question. Oh, it's just a thank you, uh, which I definitely echo. The slides will be available. Um, and if you have any questions after that, you can contact us via, uh, via MCB. And um, one thing we would like to do going forward is promote the blue model um, beyond Cornwall. We're in discussion with the uh, Mental Health Foundation. Uh, NCB have been one of our key partners and we're hoping to sort of spread the word and also the Mental Health Foundation, not least because we need funding. So uh, there might be a point where we come back to you looking for funding sources or we present you with a large hat. Um, OK, thank you very much for your time, everybody. I hope it's been uh, useful and please do contact us if you have any questions in the future. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And just as a reminder, the second uh, workshop will start in 10 minutes. So there's a sort of 10 minute comfort break in between. But yeah, thank you everyone. And we'll, we'll send around the slides shortly. Thank you.